thanks for coming on the show. How excited are you to be here at Mezzanine in San Francisco? Um, I always love this venue. It's it's kind of a bit like playing a club for me. We've got a you know, really loud PA and it um, feels like a club gig and everyone's standing up and it's one of my favorite gigs. Right. I love it here. <laughs> it's more intimate. Yeah, and uh, people, you know, because a lot of the music we're playing is quite dance, you know, orientated. So it really goes goes well with this club. <laughs> Now, for those in the Bay Area who don't know, tell everybody, you know, the story of how you came up with the famous hit, No One Is To Blame. Um, well, No One Is To Blame, it was, um, I was going around doing radio station promotion with a, uh, a guy from the record company. And uh, he said to me, you know, what do you think of all the amazing, beautiful women here in San Francisco? And I said, um, yeah, yeah, you know, they're amazing, like women all, all around the world are amazing. Um, but, you know, I've got my Jan and, uh, you know, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not sort of, you know, looking. Um, and he said, you can look at the menu, but you don't have to eat. And so, I, you know, songwriter brain kicks in and I thought, oh, you know, there's a song here. So um, that's where it came from. So I'm looking forward to seeing your fans use the app Engage to yeah. interact with the show tonight. You know, what's what's been the most fun about the app so far? Um, well, you know, people, uh, it's early days for it. I think we're the first people to actually have this app where we can actually broadcast stuff from the stage. We're not, we won't be doing it tonight. We do that with the full Engage show right. um, that we can only uh, uh, perform like three or four times a year because it's quite a big production. Right. But people bring their, their Engage apps uh, to the shows and there's still stuff they can do like send me messages and also have the images that we use on, on the album uh, visuals, you know. So um, we're going to develop the app over the, um, over the next few years into something really amazing and even like put set lists uh, out to people so they can know what we, all the songs we played and things like that and yeah. It's going to be great. Now what I admire about you is that you're fearless, you know, you had that bold hairstyle in the 80s and now you're always trying new things in your show so I have to ask, is there anything that Howard Jones is not afraid of? Well I think there's always, you know, there's always a slight fear every time you go on stage that something's going to go wrong or, uh, you know, or the audience is not going to like it or, <laughs> you know, I mean I think that you, you, you learn to live with that fear and, and part of the joy about of playing live is that that there is the fear involved so you overcome it and then you enjoy it sort of thing but it doesn't actually ever go away <laughs> um so i'm really used to that now and so um i, I just i just um that's it, it's adrenaline isn't it you know and um it's what makes it so exciting to do what i do so i i am you know i am afraid uh, of things you know not going right but I just get through it, get over it, you know. And Has do anything it. happened during the show that you probably were like, that was a little scary? Everything, everything <laughs> has happened, Every, literally everything. I mean, the gear completely breaks down. I have to do the whole show just singing. Um, I've had uh, every disaster. I've had, I've had band members fall off the back of the stage. I've had people attack me on stage. I've had literally everything you can think of has happened. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> now, can you tell us the story of how you met your wife, Jan, and how she might be partly responsible for your signature pops and sound? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, she would never claim that. <laughs> um, no, when I met Jan, um, I taught her to play the piano. Um, that's what I go right back. We go back to when she was, I was like still at school, and so was she, and I taught her how to play piano, and she got grade five, which is really quite good, you know. <laughs> Um, so we we didn't get together then, of course, it was much later when she was at college and um, we got together. Um, yeah, so it's kind of, we've just grown up together really, we've always been. Now I also heard that she bought, you had bought, you had gotten two instruments at yeah, once. Yeah, it was great because one, one of them I played bass on and the other lead lines and that's where the lead line for the new song comes from. But I, there's a, there was a point at which I'd run out of hands to do stuff and so I asked Jan if she would come on stage and do um, a bit of playing and she absolutely hates any kind of thing like that. She just like absolutely hates it. It was torture for her. So it didn't last very long that, that, that period, but um, I just needed somebody to play some chords in the middle because I was doing lots of other things and you couldn't do it any other way at the like, time. Like Howard and Jan, the next Sunny and Cher. Yes, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> no, you you did a cover for Dido's White Flag, so beautiful. You know, what did you like most about that song? Um, well, I love, I'm always into lyrics, you know, and um, I, I felt it was such a passionate song and so beautifully articulated. 
um, that I, you know, it's the sort of thing, that's what really attracted me to it. So, um, and I know that she did hear it and she was really, really pleased with the version. So um, I, I, was, I was happy then. That's, that's, that's even better. <laughs> Now you've said you're a fan of cinema, and I know you're a big fan of Planet of the Apes. So what are some of your favorite movies of all time? Um, well, I'm a big science fiction fan. You know, I love um, Blade Runner, and I love um, the Alien, you know, saga. I love um, anything that's in space, really. <laughs> Star Trek movies, I like. But I, I also like really um, sort of, you know, c uh, comedy films. Um, I mean, um, but, but I always come back to space. I mean, you know, uh, gravity and things like that. And, uh, you know, it's, it, those are the things that always get me. And if I don't mind, it, even if it's like a comedy science fiction like Galaxy Quest, it's one of my favorite films as well, you know. Just relates back to tech. Yeah, 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 that's it. There. That's it, yeah, in Tron, all those things, you know, <laughs> anything with a bit of science fiction in it, yeah. Now, I've recently seen Matchbox 20 did a, you know, did a cover song of No One Is To Blame. Oh, yeah. And then I've heard new song in Breaking Bad. And, you know, oh, yeah. right over the past, you know, 30 years later, new generations are enjoying your music. So my question to you is, what hits home most about the lasting power of your music? Um, well, I mean, I was very uh, considerate of what I was putting in to the song. So the, so the lyrics had to mean something you know, that would last. So, and, and so that was my intention right from the start. And I think that if you go into it like that, then, and if you stick to it, then things will resonate into the future. And I'm very lucky, I feel, that that, that, is, that has happened. And there's things I talk about, you know, I, I didn't talk about, you know, love uh, uh, in the traditional way that a lot of pop songs did. And I've got no problem with that, but I, I wanted to, put other things into the songs about, you know, like, they're songs meant for when you're going through a bit of a bad time and you need a bit of a boost mm -hmm. and you need a bit of a lift and everyone needs that, like a bit of encouragement and the songs were designed to do that because I got that out of the artists and music that I loved and that, so I thought, right, that's what I want to do, you know. Yeah, you're very positive in a lot of us respect. Thank you.